שלום וחג שמח. I am Rabbi Michael Bakan and this is the teaching on Passover. In Hebrew we say Pesach, in English we say Passover, and this is coming from the Beth Israel Sephardic Center in Beth Israel, in Bradenton, Bradenton from Bradenton, Florida. So what do we need to know about the Passover? First of all, this year is going to be a little unique for a lot of people. For one, because as most of you know that are listening now, maybe in the future you won't know, but we're in the midst of the coronavirus uh, pandemic. And so we're not supposed to be congregating together, meeting together in large groups. And so we will not be having a Passover Seder for the congregation. And as many Jewish congregations around the world will not be having a community Passover Seder. But on one hand, this is kind of a good thing. We try to look for the positive. We say Hashem does everything for our good. This is causing families to get together on their own, even to Skype from across the world and across the country, together with families to do a Seder that they never would have done before. So in some ways, this is stretching us and causing us to reach a little bit deeper and come up with more creative ways. So I trust that you all will have a good Seder at home. It's really not that hard. Basically, all you need is a Haggadah, and you just go through it, and it tells you everything you need to know, basically. Uh, first of all, however, let me just say the proper Hebrew pronunciation is Haggadah. Usually, words, Hebrew words that end in ah, the accent is on the last syllable. Now, I know many people try to Americanize the word, and they call it Haggadah but it's really called a Haggadah. In Hebrew, that's how you pronounce it. Haggadah simply means the story or the telling. The telling, it's called Haggadah Shel Pesach, the story of Pesach. And this is, like I said, really all we need to know, but we need to know a little biblical history. We need to know a little bit more about the Feast of Pesach. And so, most of this story comes to us, or the teaching comes to us, from Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12 is pretty much the going out of Egypt and the, uh, the destruction of Egypt and Pharaoh. But a couple of things we need to understand, as with all our holidays, are really, and they're really, they're Moedim, they're appointed times. These are appointed times by Hashem. This time of Pesach was appointed or ordained at the creation of the world. At the beginning, God knew this would be the night that He would bring us out of Egypt. So we have to understand that all of our appointed times have kind of two sides. We have a spiritual side, which we need to de look deep into the spiritual part of our lives. And then we have a more physical aspect, uh, the more sometimes fun. The Passover Seder can be fun. Um, a little bit of humor is good, but it's more of a the physical thing. For instance, the chametz. So we're commanded to get the chametz out of our house. We're not supposed to eat chametz. Well, there's a, again, there's a literal physical chametz. That's leaven that we're supposed to get out of a house. But the spiritual aspect, the leaven represents sin. And the sin that is in our heart, that's what we need to really be searching for, which we should have been searching for for the past 30 days, at least. All of our, the rabbis teach us that uh, we should begin to prepare for a holiday or an appointed time at least 30 days before. And that includes finding the scriptures, studying the scriptures, praying, and preparing ourselves, again, physically and spiritually. Physically, we need to buy matzah, we need to buy some fine linens, maybe for the Seder table, uh, some flowers, maybe some decorations, maybe some finger puppets, 
uh, for the ten plagues for the children. But that's the physical part. The spiritual part, we need to be searching for leaven. And there's a little ceremony that we do, and maybe we should start there. It's called Bidichat Chametz, searching for Chametz. And I used to have a little set. It consists of a feather, a candle, uh, and a wooden spoon. And so tonight, this is uh, the evening of the evening of Passover. This is the uh, 13th of Nisan. And so by tomorrow morning, uh, the morning on the 14th of Nisan, we should have all the chametz out of our house. Traditionally, some people have a little ceremony, take it outside and burn it. Uh, some people give it away, some people throw it away. Some people even have the tradition of saving the lulav from Sukkot and using that as a little kindling to start the fire to burn the chametz on the morning of the 14th of Nisan. But today is the 13th of Nisan. I know this teaching is a little late, um, but as I said, I'm new to the video technology as far as streaming and getting things online because of this coronavirus. This has forced us to not have services and not have our traditional teachings um, or the usual style of teachings in our synagogue building. So so we go through the house, again, this is done, the, they make these little sets of feather, and so you, the, all the chametz is pretty much out of the house by now, but you'd leave a little bit hidden somewhere, uh, and you'd take, and this is pretty much for the children, you'd take the children, and you'd go through the house with the candle, and you're searching for the chametz. That comes from the, the, the proverb who said, the, the candle represents the spirit. And it is the candle that searches our heart. Uh, the candle of Hashem is the spirit that searches our heart. And so you go and you, of course, you know where the chametz is. The parents know where the chametz is, the father, the mother, whatever. And you find it behind a curtain, perhaps in a window cell. And you, you say, see how easy it is to miss us. We cleaned the house thoroughly, but we still missed a little bit. There's always a little bit more. And so then you take the wooden spoon and you take the feather and you scoop it into the, let me get up here where we can see, and you scoop the, the feather, you scoop the chametz into the spoon and you throw it out with the rest of chametz. And so, of course, we don't do anything without a blessing, so maybe I should start with the blessing for removing chametz. Again, you can find this in a Haggadah. <coughs> Or if you want to say Haggadah, um, you can say Haggadah, but you'd be wrong. If you were in my presence, I might have to do something. Because it's Haggadah. And I, we need to learn to pronounce the Hebrew words right. So the blessing for searching for Chometz is Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaAlam Asher Kidshana B'Mitzvotav V'Tzibano Al Bi'or Chometz. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with these commandments and commanded us concerning the removal of chametz. And so, again, by tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, all the chametz should be out of the house. We'll talk about it a little bit more, why it's so important. Uh, and it is important because Hashem said, not even a little shall remain. So, a couple of things in the... Haggadah, again, we start out with, usually with the four questions. And actually, we start out in the beginning. There are 15 orders to the Seder. And uh, just like the, there's a, I believe there's a, a meaning to that number. There are 15 Shir uh, Hama'alot, the songs of ascent. And there were 15 steps leading into the temple. And also Noah's ark arose 15 cubits above the earth. So I think there's something to that 15 as far as reaching the, the, the point that we're supposed to reach. And so there are 15 orders. And um, so we usually read them in the beginning. There's actually a tune that goes with it, but I'll just read them. Kadesh Orchatz Karpas Yachatz Magid Ratzah. Motzi Matzah Maror Korek 
Shulchan Arach, Tzafun, and Barak, Halel, and Nirzah. And those are the 15 orders. Kaddish, of course, is sanctification. Orakats is the washing of the hands before eating the carpus, which is the vegetable, usually parsley. Magid is the story, the narration of the story of the Exodus from Egypt. Raksa, again, we wash the hands prior to the meal. Motzi is who brings forth bread from the earth, the, pray, the blessing before we eat the bread. But because it's matzah, the, tonight we have two blessings that we say, um, who has commanded us to eat matzah. And matzah, let me just say, what is matzah? I, I don't have my matzah here. Uh, I should have brought it, but matzah is a special bread that's not leavened. We had to make, when we were in Egypt, we had to make the bread out of without leaven because Hashem says, I'm going to come and get you and you need to be ready and you won't have time for the bread to rise. And so you just need to use, make it without leaven. So the matzah is what we eat. And again, in English we say matzah, but it's matzah is the proper Hebrew pronunciation, again, accent being on the last syllable. And, of course, the commandment is not just to remove the leaven, although we are supposed to remove the leaven, but the commandment is we have to eat matzah. So, don't just think because you're not eating uh, leaven or bread products or pastas and things from your house, but you have to eat matzah. That is the commandment. Seven days you shall eat matzah. So again, I hope everybody got it. Again, I know conditions that we're in, it's a little hard to get to the stores, and the stores were kind of running low on some things, but hopefully you found matzah. If you're from my congregation here at Beth Israel, call me, let me know. I have some extra matzah, or should I say matzah? And then the maror, the bitter herbs, the korek, is the sandwich. Why do we eat a sandwich on Pesach? Uh, I know many people think uh, there was a man named Earl Sandwich who invented the sandwich, but we have a very famous rabbi who actually invented the sandwich, which we'll talk about a little bit. And then korek, or that was korek, the sandwich, eating the sandwich, which is the matzah and the maror, uh, the matzah and the bitter herbs together. And then shulchan urek, the table, the prepared table. And the table should be prepared in all the beauty and nice linens and nice tablecloths and um, nice, uh, the, the good dishes and bring all these things out. And that's the beautiful prepared table for Pesach. And then Safun is the... Uh, the hidden part of matzah that we bring out later after the meal, most of the time is called afikoman. Afikoman is actually a Greek word, but the Hebrew word is tafun. And then barak is the berkat hamazon, the blessing after the meal, which we should do after every meal, but that's part of the Passover Seder. And then halal, the psalms of praise that we also read traditionally at all our appointed time. And then the nirzah that Hashem would accept our prayers or, is, or accept our observance of the Passover Seder. So let me just say at this time also, again, I'm a little unprepared. I don't have a Seder plate, but on the Seder plate, there is a, a Zoroa, which is a lamb shake. Typically, we don't eat lamb at Pesach now because we don't have a temple in which we were to sacrifice the lamb. So we use a lamb shank to represent uh, the lamb, the Passover lamb. We have carpus, which is the green vegetable. We have uh, maror, which are the bitter herbs, usually horseradish. Uh, some can use some type of lettuce for that, but usually most people traditionally use horseradish. And then we have charoset, uh, which is this mixture that only Jews know what it is, the Jewish people. Uh, it's a mixture, it can be made many different ways. It's apples and nuts and honey and raisins and uh, probably a few other ingredients. You can make it all different ways, 
but it's a mixture that represents the mortar and we eat the charosa because it represents the mortar that we had to make and use to make the bricks. And then beitza is an egg. We have a hard boiled egg on there. And then we have chazeret, which is another uh, uh, lettuce. Uh, again, can be used as the maror, uh, sometimes a, a lettuce for people. But to this I say you should eat the horseradish because it's supposed to bring tears to your eyes. And this is where we separate the men from the boys, as we say, to who can actually eat the horseradish. So that's a little bit about the Passover table, the Passover plate. But we start with the, the four questions. Uh, and again, we'll see why we use, have the four questions a little bit when we read in the book of Exodus. But the four questions go like this. Usually the children know it. This is usually one of the very first songs Jewish children learn at a very young age. <clears throat> I will attempt to sing it. Forgive me, I'm not a, a cantor, I'm not a singer. Manishtana halayla haze meko halelod meko halelod shabako halelod anu oklin kametu matza kametu matza halayla haze halayla haze kulo matza shabako halelod anu oklin shear yerakot Sha'ayirakot, alayla haze, alayla haze, maror, maror. Shabako halilot, ain anuma belim, afilu pamakat, afilu pamakat, alayla haze, alayla haze, stay fe amim, stay fe amim. Shabako halilot, anu. Uoklin, Bain Yoshvin, U Bain Misubin, Bain Yoshvin, U Bain Misubin, Halila Haze, Halila Haze, Kulanu Misubin. Why is this night different than all of the nights? That's how it starts out. On this night, on all of the nights, we eat chametz or matzah, but on this night, we only eat matzah. On all other nights we eat many vegetables, but on this night we only eat maror. On all other nights we do not even dip once, but on this night we dip twice. And on all other nights we sit, we eat either sitting or reclining, but on this night we all recline. So those are the four questions that are answered during the Seder. And now since the children have asked the question, and now we can begin the story. But just to review those questions, in this night, of course, we only eat matzah because we're commanded. We eat only bitter herbs because that's what we're commanded to eat. We do not, we dip twice. We dip once in what the salt water, which represents the, the sea of reeds that we went through. And then we dip later in the charoset, which represents the mortar. Remember, tonight also we're, ce we're celebrating our freedom. So we are like kings and queens, and we were slaves. Last night we were slaves, tonight we are free. Last night we didn't have dipping sauces. Last night we didn't have hors d'oeuvres and all these things. Now granted, it's salt water and corrosive, but to us it's like a real treat to have something to dip our morsels of bread in because we are eating like kings and queens. Tonight we are free. And this, because this is all about the season of our freedom, the night of our freedom. And then the last question is, why is it on all of the nights we eat sitting and recline them and this night we all recline? Which is, this, is, this is another reason why this Seder may be good, because again, traditionally they would not, you know, in ancient days they didn't have tables, but they would lay around like a, maybe a cloth set on the floor as a table, and they would sit back and recline, and again, like kings, they're enjoying themselves. Kings and queens were enjoying ourselves. So at the night, you can bring out the pillows and the sofas, and you can sit back and recline and kick your feet up and eat like a king or a queen, because that's what we're celebrating. So the four questions are asked, and then we can begin the story. And we begin, but, well, we have one more thing we have to do. 
the Torah uh, speaks of four types of children, or four sons, really four ways, or four people who study the Torah. We also have the wise son, we have the wicked son, and we have the simple son, and then we have the son who is unable to ask the question. The wise son, what does he say? What are the testimonies, decrees, and ordinances which Hashem, our God, has commanded you? Therefore, explain to him the laws of Passover, of the Passover offering, and that one, that one may not eat of the dessert after the final taste of the Passover offering. And then we have the wicked son. So he, will, the wise son, will receive and want to be involved in the seder and the goings on or what's going taking place, and he will learn and he will receive what he is told. The wicked son, what does he say? Of what purpose is this work to you? And he says to you, thereby excluding himself. By excluding himself from the community of believers, he denies the basic principle of Judaism. Therefore, blunt his teeth and tell him, it is because of this that Hashem did so for me when I went out of Egypt, for me, but not for him. Had he been there, he would have not been redeemed. That's the wicked son, by, because he excludes himself. You know, we, he says, what is this to you? And we need, he needs to say, what is this to me? Or what is this to us? How are we all together here? And the simple son, what does he say? What is this? Maze. Tell him with a strong hand did Hashem take us out of Egypt from the house of bondage. And then there is the son who is unable to even ask what you must initiate the subject for him as it is stated. You shall tell him your son on that day. You shall tell your son on that day. It is because of this that Hashem did for me when I went out of Egypt. So there are the four types of sons. And actually now we can begin the story of Pesach. And it begins and it goes through the whole uh, how we were afflicted, how we ended up in Egypt, and how we are going to come out, or how we come out. So Hashem took us out with a strong hand, and a strong right hand, and a out strong outstretched arm. And then there's one little saying that we have when it talks about bringing us out. And it's called Vehi Sha'amda La Avoteno, Velanu Shelo Echad, Beovad Amad Alenu Lechaloteno. It stood, it is, it is stood, it is this that stood by our fathers and us. For not only one has risen against us to annihilate us, but in every generation they rise up to annihilate us. But the Holy One, blessed be He, rescues us from their hand. So what is it that stood? The covenant, the covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That, that covenant or that promise that has stood against every enemy that has come to destroy us. Earlier, it was Levan with Jacob, and then in the Passover, it's about Pharaoh, and then later it was Haman, and all these others that come against us. But why have we survived? Because of the promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The covenant. That is what stood, and that is what will stand in every generation, even now as we continue to go forth. So there's the Haggadah, the Seder. Um, so like I said, Haggadah shall Pesach. But, uh, well, this is my little thing. We like, we also, there also is a special ice cream for Pesach. Because I was looking in the store, and there it is right on, right on the package of the ice cream. So this is the Haggadah Shal Pesach. So what do you suppose that special ice cream is? It's called Haggadah Shal Pesach. So there you have it. Haggadah's ice cream. Shal Pesach. Oops. The ice cream for Pesach. Okay. So Exodus chapter 12. Let's look at Exodus chapter 12. Vayomer Adonai Vayomer Adonai El Moshe Ve'el Aharon Va'aretz Mitzrayim Le'mor 
And the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be the beginning of months for you. It shall be the first month of the year. So there is the first commandment given to the nation of Israel as a nation, and it is the what we call the Rosh Kodesh, the new moon or the new month. And this month of Nisan, although it wasn't called Nisan in the Tanakh, because Biblically, months didn't have names, but it was just the first month. But this is known as the month of our redemption. And this was our, what we know now is our first redemption or our early redemption. But we're looking for what we call the final redemption. In the, uh, the weekday Amidar, we, we pray a prayer, Ga'al Shlema. Final or perfect redemption, and that is what we are awaiting. So we had the first redemption, but we're still looking for the final redemption. And it all relates to this month. This month is the beginning of our appointed times, the beginning of, the, of our trip from Egypt and our journey to Eretz Israel. It's interesting, a little later in chapter 12, we come from Ramses, we come from Egypt, and where's our first stop? It's Sukkot. Now, why Sukkot? That's very interesting. Uh, we learned, or we read of Sukkot back in the beginning. I'd like to go back, and where do we first see the word? And that tells us a little bit about something. So Sukkot, where do we learn about Sukkot? When Jacob separated from Esau. And it says, Esau went back to Seir, and Jacob went to Sukkot. And then it says, it's kind of interesting because it says he went to Sukkot, but then he said he built huts, sukkahs, Sukkot, for his cattle, and he named the place Sukkot. But it would appear that it was very prophetic because he established a place for us when we came out of Egypt, and that's the first place we went to Sukkot. But also on a timeline, we think of things on a physical plane traveling from here to there, but there's also a timeline. So this Pesach is our first appointed time. Nisan is our first appointed month. And where do we end up? Or we're traveling in time from Pesach to Sukkot. And Sukkot, like I said, Pesach is the early redemption. Sukkot actually represents the final redemption. The marriage feast, when Hashem comes down and after He's judged the world, and after he's given or shown us his mercy on Yom Kippur, he will establish his kingdom during the time of the Feast of Sukkot. So we're journeying in time. We're journeying in the, the land from Egypt to Israel, or even from here to Israel, but we're journeying in time from Pesach to Sukkot. And this month, according to the rabbis, when this month occurs, this establishes when the appointed times will fall throughout the year. So he says, speak to the, I'm in Exodus chapter 12, verse 3, speak to the entire assembly of Israel, saying, on the tenth of this month you shall take for the, themselves each man a lamb or a kid for each father's house. A lamb or a kid for the household but if the household be too small for a lamb or a kid, then he and his neighbor who is near his house shall take according to the number of people. Everyone according to what he eats shall be counted for the lamb or the kid. An unblemished lamb or kid, a male within its first year, shall it be for you. From the sheep or from the goats you shall take it. And it shall be yours for examination until the 14th day of this month. And the entire congregation of the assembly of Israel shall slaughter it in the afternoon. And they shall take some of its blood and place it on the doorpost and on the lintel of the house in which they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted over fire, and matzot, and with bitter herbs shall they eat it. So there's the commandment to eat matzot, matzot, with bitter herbs, the maror, over, and the lamb shall be roasted over the fire. You shall not eat it partially roasted or cooked in water, only roasted over fire. Uh, to be kosher, our meat is supposed to be well roasted, 
and not boiled in water. That was a pagan tradition to boil meat in water. But anyway, so back to the 10th, this 10th of this month. It's interesting because the 10th of the month, this year in Egypt, or that year in Egypt, somewhere is around 12 or 1500 BC, we, uh, various historians or scholars differ on the date, but it was somewhere around then. But the 10th of the month, they know the calendar back then, or they can trace back the calendar, all, though again, there wasn't an actual calendar as we have today. But the 10th of Nisan that year was a Shabbat. And that's very interesting to know, because again, that was on the 10th of Nisan, four days, and you, till you bring the lamb into the house, everybody would go out and get a lamb, every family or every household, and they would bring it into the house. And it says they would examine it for four days because it had to be without blemish. And so you'd kind of get to know it a little bit and you would uh, examine it thoroughly to make sure there were no um, lame legs or whatever, if it wasn't blind or there wasn't any blemishes on it. And then it could be slaughtered for the Pesach. Uh, there's something interesting uh, also relating to this um, when